Python students, let's get web scraping. Before we're ready to actually dive into the logic and core functionality of web scraping itself, we need to set up our environment to be able to do so. So what I'd like you to do is create a new project called web scraper and create a simple .py file also called web scraper. I'm not going to be providing, be providing you the code for this section. So I'd like you to write down this all yourself, go through the process. So you start to understand and learn how to perform a few pieces of functionality here. The second thing that we need to do once this is all set up is head down to the Python console where we are going to be importing, oh, sorry, into our terminal, not the console. Let's go into the terminal itself. So we're in the virtual environment directly. This is the environment our Python code is running. And so we want to import and install our packages and libraries in here so that we have access to them in our project. What we're going to run in here is pip the Python installation program to install something called beautiful soup four. This is the package that we are going to be working with in this section. So I've here installed beautiful soup four. You should get a similar message for yourself. And once that's installed, we can close the terminal down here and then actually do the import. I'm going to say from BS4, which is the package name for beautiful soup four. I want to import beautiful soup and beautiful soup is a package that's going to allow us to work with processing website HTML data. Now, before we actually can import stuff from websites, we need to be able to access and query those websites through Python. So we need a second package to be able to do so. I'm going to show you an alternate way to import packages. I'm going to say import requests. This is the library that we need, but it's not imported yet. I could install this in the pip manager, but I can also here when it pops up, click on this little warning thing and see that it's smart enough to know that this package requests needs to be installed. And if I choose this, you'll see at the bottom installing package requests, and it should just go install the package automatically. And now I should see if I type in requests dot, I have some functionality. And I also see if I type in beautiful soup dot, I have some functionality. So I've imported these sources of methods and interesting uh, tools to be able to use to solve our problems into the program here. And now let's just quickly check that we're able to work with these. So what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to get access to a web page to do so. I'm going to access my requests uh, object that I've made here and be able to, well, I'm going to get, this is the method that we use to get information from a website and inside of these uh, quotation marks or in the string here, I need to put an actual URL to a website. So if we go to the web over here, maybe I will Google cats because why not? And head down, not to the movie. Ugh. Let's go to the actual Wikipedia page and I'm going to snag this URL and just head back over and paste it in here so that I have access to this website. And let's just see what happens if I print out this page and we'll see what it is that it says in my program. Response 200. This response means this is a successful web connection that I've made. So I've actually been able to get access to this website. If you see a 404 message here, like you might've seen in a web browser before, it means there was an error connecting to it. There's probably a typo in your web address or something wrong with your internet, but a 200 message or anything in the 200s means there's a successful connection made of some kind. That's great news. However, you'll see that I don't, there's not actually really much information for me to interact with directly here because really I've just built a connection to this website and I now need to gather some information from it by interacting with it through my beautiful soup functionality. So I'm going to go beautiful soup dot and see that there's a bunch of functionality we'll be using in the next section. And what we're actually going to do here is use the constructor. You can look at the beautiful soup documentation if you want to see a listing on this uh, constructor, but I'm just going to teach you how to use it straight up off the bat right now. I want to access this page, but not just the page itself. I want the content of this page. What does this mean exactly? The content of the page? Well, let's take a look. Let's print out the page content and see what it shows us. It gives me this doc type HTML and then a bunch of information all the way along the side of the screen here, which is a whole bunch of HTML information that I've pulled from the website. <clears throat> so what is it I'm actually seeing here? Well, let's dive back over here to this website, close up this little banner at the top, and I'm going to press F12 on my keyboard and I get to see this element 
thing. Now, don't worry about all the other tabs here. Elements shows us all of the HTML and CSS code that makes this website. And as I scroll over it, you'll see it highlights different sections of the page that each different section of HTML kind of includes. So if I open this up, I'll see kind of subsections being highlighted. This here is the content of this text inside of here with different subsections being organized in the different breakdowns underneath, kind of like we talked about in the previous video. So I can kind of take a look at these subsections and see them highlighted and start to make sense of how the HTML is organized in this big, long, organized list of things. In my program, when I print out the contents, I'm actually just seeing all of that text as a single massive string, which is pretty unwieldy and pretty difficult to work with. So what we're doing with Beautiful Soup is we're actually going to take this content in the page's contents and we are going to process it or do something called parse it into a new format. So I'm going to use something called the HTML parser that's built into Beautiful Soup to be able to do this. And I'm going to save it as what I call soup here. It's kind of like I got this big melting pot of information and I'm, I'm kind of thinking of it as a bowl of soup. All the ingredients are now floating around together and I have access to them in this big mess. And so I've been able to store this information. What happens if I print out, I recommend you do this all the time, just to kind of see what it is you're accessing in different sections. And now I see a slightly better format of interacting with this HTML code, kind of like on the website where I see the top of the HTML and the information that begins at the top of the data for the website. You'll see similar things going on at the top here. At the top here, I see some dividers. I see some links. All this HTML and CSS content is now packaged up a little bit more sensibly inside of the program, but it's still a lot of content. So in this video, to finish things up, just make sure that you have been able to actually get and snag a request of HTML content, as well as get it put into a soup format. This is the placeholder. It's a beautiful soup type object in it that we can now view in a little bit more organization. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you some strategies for how to dig deep into the details and pull out exactly the information that we want from this otherwise big mess.